So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the latest in our series of Get to Know Wilson uh, presentations that we've been doing uh, this spring. Um, before we get started with our presentation today, however, um, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing somebody very special on this call, uh, somebody who, like today's session, has a very good idea of what first year success actually means. Um, I'm pleased to introduce uh, President Wesley Fugit, who is joining us for a little introduction today. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I am so delighted to be here for just a few minutes to share with you my enthusiasm um, about the prospect of you joining us this fall. I know many of you have already uh, sent in deposits. Many of you are still making the decision. And uh, I just want you to know that we are very excited about having you on the Wilson College campus in the fall. Um, this is a wonderful community. Um, and as you're about to learn, we have great faculty and staff who will help support you um, through every step of your journey. And I know that this is a really challenging time for a lot of us. Um, uh, I, uh, trust and hope that you and your families and those that you care about most are well um, during this challenging time. Um, but I also want to say I know that it's easy during these challenging times to think about putting off um, your college decision or the opportunity to go to college. And I want to tell you why that's not a great idea. You may not be aware, but over your lifetime um, as a college graduate, you'll make a million dollars more than you would if you were just a high school graduate on average. And so every day that you delay going to college, it's gonna impact how much money you'll be able to make over a lifetime. Um, not to mention that I think the Wilson College experience is great and you need to um, be a part of our community just as soon as possible. Um, I have to go be uh, in a meeting with our board of trustees. Um, they've already gotten started without me, but I just wanted to drop in and say um, how excited we are that most of you will be joining us as a part of the Phoenix uh, family in the fall and that we have a great team of faculty and staff waiting to support you and answer any questions that you might have about being a part of uh, the Wilson community. So thanks for being here today and I'll look forward to uh, meeting you all in just a few short months. Bye-bye. All right, thank you, Dr. Fugit. Um, so I hope, of course, everybody caught that. That is how important everybody on this call is today, is that we let the Board of Trustees wait for you. So I'm just pointing that out. That's, that's not a small thing. Um, but uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Michael Montana. I'm Senior Director of Admissions. Um, and I know I see a lot of the names today. Many of you, this is not the first time that you've joined us for these sessions, so welcome back. Um, but you know, I know you've heard me say it before, uh, I appreciate you joining us. We know these are not the ideal circumstances to get to know Wilson. Um, you know, we love this time of year to invite you to campus, to show you around, you know, to talk to you about what we do. Um, and unfortunately, since we're not able to do that, we hope that at least, you know, what we're doing here gives you a little bit of a flavor of, of the Wilson experience and, you know, what we can offer. Um, so to get started, um, I just want to do a quick housekeeping before I throw it to the presenters. Um, we will, of course, um, be doing a Q&A session after this. We ask, of course, that you keep your audio and video off, um, but you can use the chat function to chat directly with me, and then when we hit the Q&A portion, I'll relay those to the presenters. Um, so without further ado, I would love to present some of, I think, the all-stars of our campus. Um, I'll let them introduce themselves a little bit and tell you, you know, what it's like to be a Wilson student that first year. And I remember my first year of, of school, and yeah, this is a big one. Um, I would definitely pay attention because they know every day they work with these students, they lived it and you know, they know, they know what it's like every day, what those students talk to them about, what they go through. Um, and they're a big part of why our students are so successful. So again, without further ado, I would, uh, I'll hand this off to Dean Mary Beth Williams to start introductions. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mary Beth Williams. I'm the vice president for student development and the Dean of Students. And I will actually be speaking last. Um, so I will uh, let the others introduce themselves. Um, Katie. Hi, my name is Katie Coe. I'm the Assistant Dean of Students and the Director of the Single Parent Scholars Program. And I'm on this call primarily because part of my responsibility is new student orientation, which I love. And we'll talk about that in, in just a few minutes after, after the other introductions. Kelly. Uh, my name is Kelly Spies and I'm one of the librarians here at Wilson. I've been at Wilson since 2002 and that is an extremely long time, but the reason I'm here is because I love it and I love talking to people about the library, which I'm going to do, I think, third to last. 
Um, so I'll throw it over to Teresa right now. Hi, I'm Teresa Hoover. I'm an associate professor. I think, yeah, I just got a new title <laughs> of education and I teach special ed classes. And I'm excited to meet all of you because I was a first generation college student and I went to an undergraduate program that was at a college very similar to Wilson. So I'm super excited to share with you some things you can expect your first year. So Katie, back to you. Sure, thank you. So um, normally, those of you who have already received your welcome packet, um, and, and welcome packets are sent to students after they um, submit their, their enrollment deposit, you'll get a, you know, a packet of information in the mail. And if you've had a chance to look through those, um, you've seen a couple of the inserts that reference the new student orientation programs, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, but uh, what I want you to know is that whether we're in person or um, doing this uh, through this delivery method, orientation is really important. Um, it is it is my favorite time of the year, and it it is. I love watching that transition. This is the best part about Wilson. I love watching that transition of students coming to campus. Um, as, as visitors and then as, as new students and then all the way through graduation. Um, and just a quick side note, we had to, a couple of us had to do a, a, a video message to seniors a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if anyone on the call had to do this. Um, and I, all I kept thinking about was these same students coming in for orientation. And I, I burst into tears about 20 times as I was saying it. And my daughter who was filming me kept having to get, go back further and further and further because my face was all red and blotchy because I still, I still remember these students coming in as, as new first year students. And so <clears throat> I say that to say it's a really exciting time and, and we get that um, it's a little bit different, but I think some of the feelings are still the same, that it's that you're nervous and you're excited and you're, and you're thinking about what's next. And, and Wilson College is, is the absolute perfect place to do that. Um, and, and that transformation from, from first year student or whether you're a transfer student coming in um, after a year or two somewhere else through graduation is a really amazing process at Wilson. So what this looks like in terms of orientation for the summer, um, in your welcome packet, you will see a, a, a page that asks you to RSVP for a couple of dates. Originally, we had intended that to be an online, or I'm sorry, an in-person um, experience and events. We're, we're transitioning those to online, so you'll, you'll have an experience similar to this. There'll be some some folks who are um, able to talk to you live during those, that time, and then there will be some pre-recorded sessions for you um, with some more specific nuts and bolts kinds of information that you can access all summer long. So when you get that packet of information, please read through it. Um, contact us if you have any questions about what this might mean for you and whether you're residential or whether you're planning to commute. Um, those, those days are um, intended to, to get you some of that information. There'll be some scheduling opportunities and some academic advising opportunities. So look through that and RSVP, go ahead and RSVP for one of those dates. It's not, it, it doesn't mean you're coming to campus. We just, we like to know who's coming on what particular day. Um, and and it, we're trying to make it as fun as it, as it can be um, this way. We, we can't wait to, to meet you all in, in person and, and see you face to face, um, but we're anxious to get that started ahead of time. And uh, so for me, that's what orientation is about. And, and that's why I wanted to, to share that with you and what you can expect in terms of your next steps um, right now. So I will, I could talk about it forever. I can talk about Wilson and orientation forever and I won't. I'll, I'll slide it back over to uh, Dr. Huber. Hi, I have to echo Katie, your sentiments. Um, I was recording my message to graduates and my friend who was recording it we were like oh my gosh i'm crying at the end we got to change that um because to me the orientation and the first week you're here is as exciting as when we say goodbye and good luck at the end of your experience with us so my role here is to talk to you a little bit about what the first year experience is is like so you, as first semester wilson students you take a class called freshman I think it's, is it called freshman seminar still? The first year seminar. Thank you, first year seminar. <laughs> so anyway, you take this first year seminar and um, that class is meant to be a class where you kind of learn how to navigate and it actually starts during orientation, which is another reason why orientation is so very, very important. But it gives you an academic overview of um, what your classes are gonna be like. So you start meeting during orientation week and there's a group about of about 15 of you per class and um it teaches you things like um how do i look up 
how do I read a syllabus? How do I, um, how do I contact my professors? What do I do if I get stuck in this situation? Or if I get, if I need help, um, if I need counseling, if I need a nurse, if I need um, career planning, if I need academic success, how, how do I get there? And the class itself is designed to not only walk you through those things, but to also help you learn how to manage your time as a college student, because there's no one really kind of hovering over you any, anymore. And I think one of the unique things about the first year experience, as well as a very unique thing about Wilson in general, is faculty are here because of you. You are the most important thing to us. We focus on you, we want to get to know you, we love mentoring you, and we like to share your successes and we like to help you figure out your challenges because we know that this time of life, there's a little bit of both. And I know like just for myself in my office on campus, um, which I am missing a lot right now, I have my grandma's rocking chair in there. And I always say, come sit in grandma's rocking chair because there's just something comforting about a rocking chair and some hot chocolate or coffee or whatever that makes you feel really good. But all of your professors want you to do that. And they, we want to know when you're, when you're stuck on an assignment, you know, um, making sure that you feel free to email us like Dr. Hoover, I'm very stuck on this assignment and I don't know what to do. And if my office hours don't match your free time, I'm willing to make an appointment at a time that works for both of us. And so are your other professors. So this experience is just is really to get you acclimated to the expectations, but to also let you know all the wonderful things that Wilson has to offer in terms of your academics and in terms of supporting your dreams. So I'm gonna leave you with one of my favorite freshman year seminar stories. Um, four years ago, I had a beautiful young lady in my freshman seminar class and um, we were working on her freshman seminar paper and part of their process was they had to schedule a meeting with me and go over what they were writing. And she sat down and she was talking about what she was majoring in and then she said, you know, Dr. Hoover, I really was thinking about going to Vermont for environmental law. And she goes, but I picked Wilson because it's closer to home and I didn't want to be in Vermont because I live in Maryland. And, and I said, oh my gosh. I said, honey, do you know that we have an agreement with Vermont Law School? And she's like, you do not. I'm like, yeah. And I wrote down the professor's name. She emailed him that very same day. And it totally changed her experience at Wilson. She connected with the environmental studies professor who was super helpful. She spent a year at the Smithsonian doing work. So like, we want to connect you to those experiences. So even if you're not sure what you want to do, we sure are excited to help you figure out what that is for you, not what we think it should be. So in that sense, you know, the faculty is really there to support you both academically as well as in your growth towards a profession that you're going to find as rewarding as we do. So, and much like Katie, I could talk forever and ever and ever about freshman seminar, but I'm going to pass it on to Kelly and let her give you some information about the library. All right. Well, my name is Kelly and I'm one of the librarians, as I said earlier, and I feel kind of like a downer in a way. Um, I feel like everybody who is positive talking about cool stuff. And now I'm going to talk about stuff that you probably don't want to talk about. And two of those things, basically studying and research papers. So, but I figure this is a call about being successful. And you know, one of the really good things that you can do for being successful is use the library. So first I'm gonna talk a little bit about the library space. We have tons of different furniture in the library. We have individual desks, big tables, comfy chairs, sofas. We have big group study rooms. We have computer labs. And all of our furniture is designed to be moved. So we know that you know one size doesn't fit all in terms of studying. So students can move chairs to their favorite corner of the library. You can move the big tables together to study in groups. So there's all different kinds of things you can do to kind of match your studying style to make you successful. Um, in addition to the study space in the library, we also have an art gallery in the library, the college store is in the library. Um, the writing uh, tutoring and the, and the uh, tutoring for academic classes is in the library. 
Um, so there's just, there's other things that are available in the library. There's a big commuter lounge, um, which we can talk about um, some things having to do with commuters a little bit later in the call, but there is a big, huge inviting commuter lounge in the library, which I personally love because my office is right across from it. Um, so there's just tons of space in the library that we want students to come and use. Um, in addition to the space, I just want to talk in terms of hours. So, you know, when you're coming to college, you know, and, and you might have some busy schedules. So you might have a job off campus, you might have a job on campus, you might be an adult student who's coming with lots of responsibilities and lots of, you know, kind of time management things you have to juggle. And so we've made our hours such that it kind of meets a lot of students' schedules. So we are open from 7.45 to 11 p.m. Monday through Thursday. We have Friday hours as well, and then Saturday hours, and then Sunday we're open till 11 p.m. so that students can buckle down in Sunday evening. That's usually our business, busiest time in the library because students realize, oh, it's Monday again. I've got to start doing some work. So Sunday in the evening is kind of our busiest time at the library. So we're open till 11 o'clock so students can get their stuff done and be ready for the week ahead. Um, and the reason why we opened at 745 is actually due to a student request. So a student requested that she be able to come print papers out or maybe put stuff in the commuter uh, lounge in the fridge and get ready for the day. So we altered our schedules to be able to make sure that the library is open at 745. Um, so that's just another way we try to, you know, listen to what our students need um, and are asking for at Wilson. So the hours make it good for you to, you know, get involved with activities. So there's lots of clubs that you can get involved in on campus. So a lot of times students uh, are athletes, so they have practices. So these hours can make it so that students can, you know, go to dinner, go to practice, and then come back to the library and get some work done. Um, we really want the library to be a place where students not only come, get what you need and leave, but kind of a place where you come, hang out with friends, do some homework, go get a coffee at the coffee shop, you know, do some more homework. You know, the big study group rooms, I often see students, you know, putting their Pandora up on the screen while they're studying, or sometimes the commuters will take a break on Friday afternoon and throw a movie up on one of the big screens. One time I saw a group of uh, student athletes uh, watching basketball games or baseball games. So they throw those up on the big screens and take a study break. So we really want the library to be a place where you can just, you know, get your work done, but also, relax and have fun because you know socializing and making friends is also an extremely important part of college life. So now I'm going to talk about the personal librarian program and essentially the personal librarian program we can help you at all stages of the research process. So Teresa talked about the first year seminar and you get matched up with your personal librarian through the first year seminar. Now, if you don't take first year seminar, you get matched up with your personal librarian by last name. So, you know, there's no problem if you don't take first, sem first year seminar, you're still going to get a personal librarian. So, as I said, we can help you at all stages of the research process, but that's not really what I want to focus on because I want you guys to actually come to Wilson and want to come to college. And so, talking about the research process is probably not the best thing to do. Um, what I want to get across about the personal librarian program is that we take it very seriously. We want to support you. And basically that means I want to be available for students to answer whatever question you might have. You know, librarians are all about how you find information, you know, where's the best place to go for this or that. Um, and so students will come to me for just about anything. Some of them even ask me like if they should withdraw from a class or, you know, I, I've gotten some, some, you know, bigger questions outside the scope of the library. Um, and I always say that if I don't know the answer or if I don't feel like my answer was exactly what the student needed, I will send you to the place where you can find the answer. 
so I really take that job seriously. Um, some of the other things that I like to tell students, I know library anxiety is a thing. You don't wanna always go ask somebody a question. It's kind of scary to go up to a librarian. You know, there's that old stereotype of the old lady with the glasses and the bun, you know, and everybody walking around going, shh. Well, you know, we, we're really not like that anymore. We do have a quiet floor on the library, but for the most part, you can kind of just come and, and do what you want. We don't expect it to be totally quiet. Um, also, I was a first generation college student, as Teresa pointed out. And so it's really, really important to me. And I take that into consideration with my whole job at Wilson. So I will be the first to tell students, you know, don't be afraid to come and ask me questions. Even if you think it's the stupidest question or the smallest question, or you're just afraid to ask it, like I am here to answer whatever question. There is no stupid questions. You can even ask me the same question three or four times. I tell students, if you forget what I said, if you know you weren't paid, paying attention, you kind of zoned out, like I'll be here to answer the same question every semester um, because that I feel like it's really, really important. And I know that when I went to, I went to a small liberal arts college very much like Wilson, I was not prepared. I had no idea what to do. Um, and so I was just thinking the other day how it was a librarian on campus who actually smiled at me and said hi every time I walked around campus. And it really helped me kind of just feel at home and feel at ease. So I think that's kind of what guides me um, as I work every day uh, for Wilson. The other thing that I, the last thing that I want to say, because I know I, I tend to talk a little bit too much, especially when it comes to library stuff, is that, you know, I'm kind of famous for answering the really, really hard questions. So if you have a really, really difficult research paper and you're trying to find sources and you're really struggling, just take it to me because those are the kinds of questions that I really thrive on. And I will tell students that literally I will not go to bed that night until I find them the right sources and the right search terms so that they can figure out what they need. Um, and that's totally true. You know, sometimes I think people think I'm lying, but really like I, I work hard and I love my job and I just wanna be here to support you. Um, so to that end, I'll kick it over to Dean Mary Beth. Thank you, Kelly. I love your enthusiasm, it's awesome. Um, it would be at this point where I would look around the room and ask uh, if you have any questions, but if, if you have any questions so far, please put them in the chat because we are here and we want to answer all of your questions. Um, and that really, I, you might be asking yourself, what does a dean of students do? Um, well, I'm basically here for you. My whole job is to help you go through your college experience. Um, I too was the first one in my family to go off to college. And I'll be honest, um, I really blew my freshman year. And uh, luckily I had somebody who was a mentor who was in a position like I am now, who helped pick me up and push me along and get me in the right place. Um, and so I wanna start there just to tell you that the thing about your first year is you're not gonna get it all perfect. Um, you're just not. And that's okay because you'll learn through the process and it's all about the process and that's why we're here. Um, there are resources to help you in every single aspect of your life at Wilson. Um, and the thing about those resources is they are there whether or not you use them. Um, they're available to you even if you don't use them. But people like Kelly and like Teresa and like Katie and like me will literally be waiting and ready for you to ask us a question. That's kind of what we live for. And if we didn't, we wouldn't be in this career. So I want you to know there are resources for every aspect of what you may need. And we'll just be there and we'll be waiting. Now that means we can't do the work for you and your professors can't do the work for you. Uh, your roommate can't do the work for you. You have to do it. So part of really succeeding your first year is understanding that there are resources, one, but using them too. Um, and the best thing you can do is just get your mindset ready for, okay, I'm gonna need a resource. And, and you will, and that's exciting, because if you don't need us, then we're, you know, we're like the Maytag repairman, we're just waiting. 
So we need you to help us. Um, and the other thing about college is any college, but especially Wilson, your experience is what you make it. It's not what we make it. It's not what your family makes it. It's what you make it. And you can be the one to get involved. Um, I love that for the fourth year running, the president of our student government on campus was not a leader in any single organization in their high school. They were members, but they weren't a, a leader. And when they got to Wilson, they realized that they had amazing leadership potential because they were willing to make this experience meaningful. Um, I always like to challenge students to leave Wilson better than you found it. Find some element of it that maybe you don't even think is right and you change it and you make the difference. Um, because your college experience will be really rewarding if you can find that niche. Um, so I would encourage you to get involved, try something new, meet new people during orientation. There's method to our madness. We do put you in small groups of strangers and you won't know everyone. And for many of you, it may be the first time that you've ever shared a room with another human, right? If you live on campus, but that's to challenge you and to really put you out there and get you to meet new people and try new things. Um, and so find something in high school that was meaningful to you and maybe continue it or find something that you've never thought about before, like going to law school in Vermont or like trying, we have a plant club because a student decided she really liked plants and wanted to start sharing plants. And now it's one of the biggest clubs on campus. And mainly it's filled up of people who know nothing about plants. They just like to get together. So that's what you can do. Um, and I did that after my freshman year. I found some things that maybe I'd never tried before. And I, and I, I tried something new and I met new people. And I realized that um, college is really your chance to make yourself a, a new, to try new things. Um, I didn't talk to my professors when I was a freshman, and uh, I didn't realize that they're really cool. And I'll tell you this, you might be thinking, if you haven't deposited at Wilson, and I hope you will, but if you haven't, you might be thinking about going to a larger institution, right? We're a small institution, I'll be honest about that. But at Wilson, all of the professors are here because they want to get to know you. They expect you to come to their office. They expect you to talk to them they don't want you to be a number if you want to be a number wilson may not be the right place for you because we want to get to know you and to help you not do the work for you but help you process the work um and i think part of the liberal arts are going to help you with that as you try new classes you're going to be required to take a class that will require you to do an oral presentation you're going to have to do a research project you're going to have to take a foreign language you're going to have to take a women's studies course, a psychology class. But all of these things are helping shape you into the person that can be adaptable in this crazy, mad environment. Um, you can talk to anybody uh, that is in the workforce right now, and we are being stretched in ways we didn't know before. But those of us that were prepared for that adaptability were ones that really went through a liberal arts experience where we were pushed to think outside the box on a daily basis and Wilson will do that for you. Um, and for me, you know, I went to college set on, I was going to major in a science. It's what I wanted to do. I was inspired by a science teacher in high school. My plan A was to major in that science. I didn't do so well in that science. In fact, I really didn't do well at all. And I didn't do well in any of my sciences. And so my advisor said, why don't you take a writing class? Now I wasn't a writer, but I took it anyways. So that took me down to, I don't know, I was on plan C or D at that point. Then I thought, I wanna teach writing. That's what I wanna do. I wanna be a teacher. I got in the teaching world. It wasn't for me. What I decided I really wanted to do is I wanted to help freshmen that were struggling just like me. So now I think I'm on plan, I don't know, maybe N, O, and then of course the pandemic has sent me into, you know, another plan, but it's really important to realize that 
adaptability is key. Using your resources is key. Um, and Wilson is exactly the kind of place that will do that. You're not gonna be a number, we're gonna know your name, and if you're struggling and you reach out to us, we will be able to help you, take you through a lot of different experiences that I think will change your world and change it for the better. So I hope if you haven't already deposited that you really think about it. And next year is gonna be awesome um, because basically people like Teresa and Katie and Kelly and I have been at home brainstorming about awesome ways to make next year even more awesome. So instead of sitting back and kind of groaning and complaining about, oh my God, we all are so itching to work with this year, next year's freshman class that we want it to go ahead and start. We want August to be here. Um, so we're excited about next year and I hope you are too. Even though it's kind of maddening with everything going on, we've been sitting here in quarantine for the past seven weeks planning about how to get you engaged and help you through your freshman year. So with that, I will turn it over to Michael and see if we have any questions from the group. All right, and I'm back and I, I have to say, we don't have a number of questions, but man, I, I can't believe I have to start talking after that. I just, I kind of want to shut it, that was amazing. Um, you know, I, we'll get to the question. I hope everybody, you know, does see the enthusiasm, the, the, the love that we have for the students. And, it, you know, I want to echo uh, a few of the things that Mary Beth said. Um, you know, when I mentioned my freshman year earlier, I, of course, was not able to go to Wilson at the time. Um, but, you know, my first year of college was not as successful as I would have wanted it to be either. And, you know, it's something that you do. You figure out who you are. You figure out what you need. But the most important thing to know coming into this, and I hope you are getting the sense from this today, is that you're not going to go through any of this alone. There are people here that want you to succeed, that that is literally all that we want when you set foot on this campus is to propel you into whatever that next step for you is, whether it's, you know, a week later, a month later, a year later, four years down the road, we want to set you up to be as successful as you can possibly be. Um, so that said, uh, I want to get to some of our questions here and let me just bring up my phone because I've been taking notes because you guys have actually, we're so far down in the chat with questions now, I figure it was just easier to write them down this way. Um, <laughs> activities have come up a number of times. Um, and I will say one of the really unfortunate parts about the fact that we had to unfortunately cancel except student days this year is that would typically we would have a huge fair where you get to talk to our staff, our faculty, and more importantly, a whole bunch of student groups that would be set up in our library. Um, so I guess, unfortunately, since we were not able to hold that this year, um, the question is, how do we find out what activities are available on campus um, so we know what to join? Sure, well, uh, there are a number of ways. Uh, there are certainly things all over the website uh, that talk about our clubs and activities. And during the summer orientation sessions, we'll certainly talk about that. During the August orientation or the welcome week, when um, the couple of days before classes begin, we have a, something called the activities fair, where clubs and activities set up um, tables um, all around Lenfest Commons and students can just walk around and and uh, see what's out there see what they might be interested in and, and the great thing is you don't have to pick that day and if you pick that day you're not stuck with it that day forward you know you might say well I want to do VMT club and I want to do activity the activities board and I'm going to do this and then and then the plant club comes along and you love that <laughs> and you can uh, you want to do that instead of the activities board. There are lots of ways um, to get involved and um, at varying levels of involvement. You don't, you don't have to be, you go in thinking, I don't want to be the president of anything. You don't have to be, but you, you'll, I guarantee you'll find something that really interests you, whether it's a, a continuation of something you're doing now or something new uh, that you want to try. So I'm not sure if others have a, a better answer to what I've just said, but that's, um, that's my input. Just I say just to tap off of Katie, um, you also get emails like about intramural things and different things that are happening like through your Wilson email. Sometimes you'll get an email and it'll be like, hey, on Friday night we're doing this or this activity is getting together or this type of intramural is getting together. So there's a lot of communication through um, your Wilson email, but also through the portal that you'll be using as a student, just announcements about upcoming events and things that, that you may choose to get involved in as well. 
Yeah, one of the great things about our portal right now is um, when you get into it, you'll be able to see there's a calendar on the side and it can tell you what's going on, when it's going on, and some of the things you just go and watch, like maybe it's a movie or um, a baseball game or a basketball game or something like that. Other things are more involved. Maybe it's a hike or a group is going snowboarding or a group is getting together um, and cooking or something like that. So it depends on the level of activity. You don't have to do all of them. In fact, don't do all of them. Um, you want to limit yourself to a few activities um, because you also have classes, which is important. But utilize the, the portal a great deal. And I think you'll um, even, I would say that is especially true if you plan on living out off of campus and commuting. Really pay attention to all of the activities that are on campus. Um, there's a, also a calendar that's always posted in the commuter lounge. So think about ways that you can get involved because really, like anything else, Wilson College should be purely transactional. You could just go to class and go home or go to your room and go to class, but you won't get the full experience mm -hmm. of what it's like unless you really get involved. All right, fantastic. Um, yes, and that is a big recommendation that I will give to, of course, any first year student, get involved. Um, and that will segue I was actually going to jump to this one in a few questions, but I figure since that segues nicely, um, we did get a question about commuting versus living on campus. Um, and, you know, what is the best way to stay connected, um, you know, as a commuter? I think one of the ways is it starts with orientation, really, is when you come and you participate fully in orientation, that starts to connect you to other commuters. It connects you to um, it connects you to resident students and um, the professors that are involved in the first year experience. But it, it gives you an idea of what all is happening and and where you can fit in extra activities. And I know a lot of my commuter students. Um, are the ones that pop in the most frequently to say hi or, or to visit or let me know what's going on. And um, again, that portal is a great way to do it. But Kelly, I think you have a great relationship with a lot of commuters. You wanna talk about that a little? I, I do. I somehow become like the commuter student librarian because as I said, my office is right a, across from the commuter lounge. But the commuter students that I meet day in and day out, they use that room every day. So I really get to know them and they really get to know each other. And they're really like a family. Um, and we've done so much for the commuters based on what they've, what they've said they needed and what we could provide. So we actually provided, you know, silverware. Um, there's lockers in the commuter lounge. So it's really become like a home away from home. There's all kinds of like cooking stuff in there, like even a toaster oven and a toaster and a coffee machine. Um, so the commuter space in the library is like, I don't know, it's, it's some of the most fantastic space on campus, I think. Um, and I just love the way the commuters really support each other and they get to know each other. Um, and, you know, just by way of them being right across the, the way, they sometimes even just go, hey, come here when they're working on something and I can go over there and help them. So it's really, really cool um, in that sense too. Yeah, and I'd, I'd like to say that, um, you know, when, when you see things advertised, um, whether it's a, an academic related activity or a co-curricular or social activity, it's for Wilson students, not Wilson students who live on campus or Wilson students in a, you know, activities are activities. And so whether it's attending something, you know, even if the movie's, showing at nine o'clock on a Friday night <clears throat> and a student who lives off campus says, well, that, that must not be for a course is for you. Um, so activities are activities, students are students um, and we, we expect them and we want them. Um, sometimes I don't even know, I, I, and I told this group earlier, sometimes I've been surprised over the years, I'll see a student a lot on campus and it takes me a couple months to realize, oh my gosh, they don't even live here. Um, live on campus because they're so you just you see them a lot um, doing things and, and being active in, in the, the life of the campus you don't have to give up one to, to have the other so you you know there's, there's room for both um, and and we just encourage you to, to keep that in mind that students are students and that we welcome you at everything 
No, that's great. Um, and I, I'm looking at this again, these questions just keep coming in, but um, yeah, the, the, the commuter versus resident thing that uh, honestly, Katie, that's an amazing point. Um, you know, you're a student and I, I had the experience. I was a, f uh, a resident and a commuter um, and they're two wildly different things. But yeah, the answer is if you still want to be involved on campus, it's really just on you. And I know I, I've definitely seen Wilson students. Um, they are much more committed to being involved than I think where I went to school, which is nice to see. Um, and Kelly's right, that lounge, that, that, the lounge that they actually have for commuters is nicer than my first apartment. So yeah, look forward to that. Um, yeah, which, uh, okay, looking at this, um, staying on the activities a little bit, and we've gotten a number of questions. In fact, many of our sessions, this has come up. Um, balancing activities and academics in terms of things like playing a sport, being involved, um, you know, what kind of support is there for that? How do students manage to keep all of those in the air? Because I know our first one was, um, our first session was actually with students where they, you know, told them about their experiences and the list and the litany of activities that these students were involved in. Um, so I guess from your perspective, you know, how do you recommend people balance all of those things that they want to be involved in while still keeping on top of academics? I would say a lot of it is about time management. Um, and everyone manages time. We just manage it differently. So some people will say, I have no time management. Well, you do because you, everybody gets the same amount of time. You just do it differently. Um, and often I find, uh, I'm, I see, I advise, um, athletics on campus and we have 11 sports. So, um, and women's lacrosse is starting this fall. So if we have any lacrosse players out there, we're very excited. Um, so we have 11 sports on campus and our athletes, um, as part of uh, working with their coaches, they have specific study time and they have to work with our academic support center, which is in the library above Kelly's office. Um, but they uh, really help them map out a calendar of each week. So you know when you practice and you know when you play a game and you know when you go to class um, and when you need to study. So I worry a little bit less about our athletes because they're required to do that by their sport. Um, but all students don't think about it because, you know, honestly, you're not going to class like you were in high school. It's not an eight to three o'clock job. You actually could sleep until 11 and go to your first class at 11. But the trick to that is balancing it all out and making a calendar for yourself and figuring out how you do it. Because for every one hour you spend in a class, you need to be studying and working about two to three outside of class and that's a hard concept so I think it's all about really figuring out how you manage your time and really thinking about planning ahead that way and treating it like a full-time job um, but then also recognizing that you may not have the skills to do that and if you don't use our academic success center and the library use any of the four of us and we will help you come up with that plan because if you, every professor will give you a syllabus and Teresa can speak to this at the beginning of the course, you will know when your exams are from the very beginning, but you may not choose to work on them until the day before, but you know when they are. And so it's really important to manage your time and be smart about your time. Risa, would you add anything from a syllabus yeah. perspective? From a, so from a faculty perspective, this is something, again, because we're so student-centered that we, we worry about. We worry about the fact that this is a whole new scheduling situation for you. And like the Mary Beth said, Time management, we all do it, and even avoiding it is doing it. So <laughs> reaching, out, reaching out to your professors. Um, you know, we want to know if you're struggling, and we want to know if you can't, you know, like, um, I know a lot of my conversations with students this semester were just like, okay, I just don't know how to get started. Okay, well, let's talk about it. Let's, let's get started together. And we, even though we give you the syllabus at the beginning and we go over it, you hear like so many different things at one time, you kind of get lost in that shuffle sometimes. But this is where reaching out to your faculty members in either during their office hours or emailing them or calling them or talking to them before or after class and saying, you know, I have to do this assignment and I just don't know how to go about it. Then we're like super excited because we've been waiting for you to ask that question. We, we're waiting for you to help. And sometimes if it's just related to our class, 
or something simple, we can help you. Sometimes you may need to go to academics, the Academic Success Center, and we help you find it and help you come up with the questions you need to ask because we've all been in your shoes. We've all gone through a first year of college more than once because every time we go back, um, when I went back for my latest degree, I, I didn't know how to use the computer search system. We didn't have computers when I went to college. And um, I can still remember like going to the librarian and being like, okay, this is really stupid, but I don't know how to do this. And she's like, oh no, it's fine. And, and, and that's exactly it. But, but the key to balancing it is as soon as you start feeling overwhelmed is to reach out to someone so that we can help you navigate it. And if we can't personally help you, we literally sometimes will even walk you to the person that can help you figure that out. And we are happy to do it because believe it or not, your success is our success. When I have a student that's struggling and that stops reaching out, it really breaks my heart because I want them to be successful. I can't do the work for you, but I can help you make a plan that is reasonable for you to get to where you desire to be. So that's one thing I would keep like a little note somewhere, like these are my professor's office hours, this is where my professor is, this is my professor's email, and utilize those resources because we are truly here to help you do that. Absolutely, and I, I will say somebody, I actually did complete my second degree at Wilson and I, I will echo all of that, um, you know, being in the classroom here, the faculty are very present. They want to help you. They want to know who the students are and seeing them interact with all of those first time students is, you know, not a staff member, but as, as a student on the other side of that, um, it really comes through. And yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I always love hearing you talk about this, Teresa, because I know, you know, you live this to an extent that I'm, I'm like, this is why I wanted you in the session. So thank you for, uh, for being here today. Um, well, thank you. I'm just looking through here. Uh, okay. Um, this one is from a transfer student. Um, first, how does orientation work uh, for a transfer? And this is one that I'm, I'm going to paraphrase a little bit, but basically what, any advice for a student who would be transferring to Wilson from another school as opposed to, you know, just starting off their career at Wilson? We get this question a lot and a lot of times we'll, over the summer months, we'll get calls from transfer students and they'll say, you know what, I've already done this. I already did orientation. I'm not a new student. So I make people crazy, um, particularly my colleagues, because I correct them all the time. And I'll say, it's not new student orientation, it's students new to Wilson orientation. <laughs> and so if you're new to Wilson, whether that, whether you're a first year student, this is the first place you've ever gone um, in the higher education world, or you're transferring to us from another institution, you're new to Wilson. And so while some of the things might be familiar, so you might be familiar with the concept of a syllabus and the importance of time management, some of that's not new to you, but the people and the places and the resources and, and the community, that, that's all new. Um, and we really, really want transfer students to, to take advantage of that. We do have sessions, um, <clears throat> not so much in the summer orientation, but in the, the few days um, before the fall semester starts, we have we do have some sessions specifically geared for transfer students, and we'll often get um, students who who are um, in their junior or senior years who, who came to us as transfer students as 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 resources and as mentors and and student leaders to talk to transfer students about how to be successful um, in this new spot. So. Um, you will not talk me out of saying you have you don't have to come to orientation. I will always find a reason why we want you. Why you if you're new to Wilson, um, orientation is for you, and and we will make it. Um, we will listen to what your questions are and what your experiences are, and we won't just say this is what we tell everyone. We tell everyone this information. If if you're a transfer student, you you have a particular concern in a particular area, whether it's. Um, maybe what didn't go well at the last institution or, or whether or now you're living on campus or living off, we'll, we'll, we'll help you find that particular answer. We're not necessarily just laying a, laying a blanket of, of the same information on top of everyone. We really want to gear it towards um, what matters to you, to each individual student, and, and how they can start that successful journey. 
And let me just reiterate that transfer students, adult students, you will get a personal librarian. So if you do not take first year seminar, if you don't have to take first year seminar and you're not matched up with your personal librarian through that, like just come knock on my door, like tell me I'm a transfer student. I need to make sure I know who my personal librarian is. Um, lots of times I get just random emails from transfer students, adult students saying, hey, who is my personal librarian? And we will get you one of those. So you will not be left out. All right, thank you. And looking at the time, I realize we, looks like we have time for about one more question. Um, and this one I know came up earlier, but of course living on campus is something that I know a lot of students are concerned about. So the question is, um, and unfortunately I know Ryan isn't on the call today, um, I don't know anybody coming to Wilson, so how am I matched with the roommate coming in? That's a great question. And I'll talk about our housing requirements as well. Um, so students who are from the Chambersburg area or from within um, kind of a, a 60 mile radius, it takes you less than an hour to get to campus. Um, you may live at home with your family or students who are married or have children, um, they can live at home. Um, but if you do not meet those requirements, so you're from, you know, uh, further away and you don't have family in the area, then you do need to live on campus for your first two years. So that's for your freshman and your sophomore year until you have 60 credits. And then you can live off campus. Um, students living on campus are required to have a meal plan, which I love our food on campus. And um, our faculty, our staff, our students, our commuting students, a lot of people eat in the dining hall. Um, but I can talk about that later. Um, if you are moving, if you're coming to campus and you're going to be residential and you don't know anyone, I didn't know anyone when I went to my college. Um, a lot of people don't. You do, if you have a friend that's coming and you want to live with them, you can prefer them. Here's the deal though, I never recommend that um, because knowing somebody over Facebook and knowing what they're like to live with is very, very different. Um, but we do ask you questions um, about your own personal preferences. Um, and we try to pair like people. Um, so, you know, if you're a night owl and the other person's not, or you're a smoker and the other person's not, you can't smoke on campus, say that. But um, we do try to pair like people. Um, and if you're an athlete, we might pair you with another athlete because we know you're gonna have a similar kind of workout routine that you need. So we ask you questions, it's called our housing questionnaire. And then we pair you up and we send you your housing assignment, which is where you're gonna live and who you're gonna live with on August 1st. Um, we do not have singles available. Singles are for medical use only. Um, so if you have a, a housing requirement, uh, you have to work through our disability accommodations um, director to do that. Otherwise you live in either a double, a triple or a quad um, in one of our residence halls. So um, we try to put like people together. Um, we do have a quiet floor, which is um, pretty awesome. We have pet free and pet friendly floors. We have a very liberal pet policy, very liberal. Um, yeah, so we have lots of animals on campus. Um, but yeah, so if you don't know anyone, join the group, we will pair you with somebody. In fact, I will say most uh, roommate agreements, um, they get along if we put them together and they don't get along as much if they put themselves together. So just putting that out there a little bit. We have pretty good success. All right, thank you. And I'm going to do something real quick because I know we're wrapping up here, but I'm going to share my screen to just very quickly um, put up some contact information here. Uh, this will also be attached to the recording on YouTube when it goes up tomorrow. Um, but I know there are a lot of questions that, that revolve around here. And I hope that, you know, everybody today, you know, saw that, that you know, we're open. We're here to help. Um, so if you have any questions for Mary Beth, Katie, Teresa, Kelly, please don't hesitate to reach out. They're always happy to engage and answer any questions, you know, that you have, whether of course you're coming in in fall 20 um, or even looking a little bit further out and you just have some questions that we weren't able to get to today or something that, you know, you get off this call and immediately go, oh, I should have asked that, um, which happens constantly, by the way. Um, so if you have any follow-up, whether it's for, you know, the four presenters, for anybody in admissions, for your personal admissions counselor, for me, you know, we're always here. Um, you know, we are checking email. Uh, normally, I would say we are always available by phone, but clearly that is a little bit touch and go right now. Um, 
but you know, we're here to answer your questions. That's what we're here to do. So if you have anything else that comes up over the next couple of weeks, months, you know, even the next year, um, you know, please feel free to reach out. So that said, I'll take this down real quick. Um, with that, I believe uh, we've come to the end of our time. So uh, first, I want to really, of course, thank um, our presenters, uh, Kelly, Mary Beth, Teresa, Katie. Thank you so much for taking your time today to, um, you know, talk to everybody and, and, you know, help us out with this. And again, we all know this is not the ideal way to do it, but, you know, I hope some of that Wilson magic came through a little bit um, <laughs> on the screen today here. And I think it did. <laughs> Um, and I want to thank everybody, of course, watching um, for joining us today and taking the time out of your day as well. Uh, we will be, be posting this on our YouTube channel um, within about 24 hours. Um, so if there's anything you want to go back to, uh, that'll be on there. If there's anybody that you know that would be interested in this, feel free to share that link with them. Um, but once again, I thank you for joining us. I hope I see some of you again uh, in some of our upcoming sessions. And more importantly, uh, those of you for Fall 20, um, I can't wait to see you on campus this fall, and I hope those of you who are still, you know, looking for even 21, um, that we'll just see you next year instead. So, again, thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. All right, thank you. Thank you, Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.